Welcome to another edition of Believe in Saints. I'm your host, David Grubb, alongside Terrence Copper. And uh, we are discussing the now one and three New Orleans Saints who have dropped three in a row after yesterday's 28 to 25 heartbreaker to the Minnesota Vikings in London. TC, man, this is a team that you know, it just doesn't matter. Close losses, like you said, there's no there are no moral victories in, in pro sports. And yeah, all three losses have been close, but it's still three losses in a row. Yeah, there's no more victories, like you said. And what's getting me is the way we're losing. Like we're we're not starting out fast offensively. It, that's that continues to happen. Turnovers continues to happen. Special team blunders continues to happen. Penalties continues to happen like these things are recipes for bad teams regardless what a roster looks like regardless the potential of a team these type things that's showing up every week week in week out are signs of a bad team you know regardless of what the talent level looks like I mean the Saints lead the NFL in two categories that you do not want to lead the league in turnovers and penalties if you lead in the league in both of those categories, chances are your record is bad. Yeah. <laughs> I but, mean, but that that goes back to discipline as well. Uh, it goes back to discipline when it comes to the penalties, uh, ball security when it comes to just being careless with the ball. You know, when you're in traffic, cover the ball up. You know, it's it's simple things like that that is that's plaguing us. You know, and and you hate to say it. Or you hate to see it, but can a team change how disciplined they are in the middle of a season? Yeah, that's the without, question. Without the coach having to spearhead this thing. You know, because when I look at it, you know, your team takes on the personality of your head coach. And I'm not saying that uh, Coach Dennis is not disciplined. I'm not saying that at all. You know, but somebody has to hold somebody accountable for all the penalties and the turnovers. Because this is a week you can't blame it on James. He's gone. You still commit two turnovers, very costly turnovers that that both lead to Minnesota costly. field goals. You know, they end drives. That's the that's the thing about turnover is that it's two ways. Because not only do you take your own points off the board but you allowed Minnesota to go back down and get points on the other end. So you made your deficit worse. You not only, you know, so you look at this team and like you said, the slow starts again, seven points in the first half, under 70 yards passing in the first half. Just, a, it wasn't, you know, Dalton was like eight for nine completing passes, but they weren't going anywhere. Um, mm -hmm. You didn't have any big plays really for this team again. You had a couple, you know, you had one 30 yard, you had a 20 something yard pass in the second half. But again, like you said, first half, you're down 13-7 and you continue to go into these situations where you have to try to find and gear up in the second half. And that's just really hard to do. It definitely is. And make to your point, the turnovers, how they're coming. Like we get two turnovers. You get you get one turnover right before the half. We're trying to take it in and, and close the half out with points ourselves. And we end up fumbling the ball and they close out the half with points. You know, so stuff like that, and then coming out of halftime, you know, they we get they get the ball, we stop them, they punt it to us, and we fumble it again, and give them better field position. So we was constantly putting our defense in bad situations. Uh, defensively, I feel like I feel like the Vikings came out with a great game plan. Uh, they knew we was gonna go man to man, so they ran a ton of crossing routes uh, to kind of get kind of get free from man to man. And Jefferson really made Lattimore look bad. Like, every catch he made wasn't on Lattimore, but he made a lot of them on Lattimore, and he kind of exploded on us. He talked about – excuse me, he talked about that. Jefferson said, basically, you know, I was looking forward to man-to-man. -to -man. Nobody gives me man-to-man. -man. And the Saints did. So he gets – he had, what, three catches combined the last two weeks? And he gets mm -hmm. ten against the Saints? And all of them seemed like they were big. Every time he yep. made a catch, it was a big catch. Especially, you know, you talk about the one right before that ends the game, essentially, the big 30, uh, what was it, 39 yards 
that puts that sets mm-hmm. them up for the game winner. Uh, and it's just those types of things. It's every week. Tell me from your perspective when a team knows that a other that the opponent is going to game that has one star that they're trying to get on track. In week one, it was Cordell Patterson. In week three, it's it's um um McCaffrey. Last night, last uh, night, you know, you're going up against Justin Jefferson. In all three of those cases, those guys have had ended up having big games against the Saints. Though defensively, those are the people you've game planned to stop specifically. Yeah, you know, it's it's tough. I guess I, I guess we felt like we could guard them man to man. I guess we felt like we could. I, I guess we felt like we had the personnel to do that. But the way he came out and played, and it was so efficient because he had 10 catches off 13 targets. So it's not like we're – it was targeting him 20 times and he got 10 catches out of uh, 20 targets. He had 13 targets with 10 catches for 147 yards. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. And then you look on the other side of the ball, uh, Thielen, he had about eight or nine catches with nine or 10 targets. So he was efficient. So it wasn't like they was getting these targets and they were just forcing the ball to him. Every time the ball came to him, there was catches. You know, so we had a lot of holes in the, a lot of holes in our coverage when we went the zone uh, across the middle. Uh, you know, right now we're just playing bad football. I think beating that defense, we did run, we did a great job stopping the run. We did a great job with that, but just overall, we're playing bad football right now. Yeah, because you know, I think people have been inclined to kind of let the defense off the hook because the offense has been so bad, but still, you gave up twelve points in the fourth quarter. When you had a chance, the game's tied, you have a chance to get a stop and go to overtime or give yourself an opportunity to have one last chance with the ball and maybe a better field position than ending up with a 60-yard kick to 61-yard kick try to end the game. I mean, tie the game. But, yeah, you, you, you give up the big play. You give up, a tur- you give up a penalty. You give up a turnover at the wrong time. The defense did – didn't do its best at certain times either. Like you said, they for the first time in a few weeks, they shut down the run. But when you know you have a team that struggled against the pass, and yeah, it looks like the pass rush numbers look decent. They got three sacks mm-hmm. in the game. They look decent. But did it feel like Kirk Cousins was in trouble? It didn't really feel like he was in trouble. He's Kirk Cousins. He holds on to the ball. You're going to get there mm-hmm. a couple times. And he throws one pick. That's Kirk Cousins. Again, we're not talking about an elite NFL quarterback. We're talking about a good a good NFL mm-hmm. quarterback, but the things the things that he did, it never felt like he was truly uncomfortable in the second half when the Saints needed him to be uncomfortable. Yeah, uh, just overall, we just inconsistency. That's what that's the perfect word for us. Inconsistency when it comes to the offense, when it comes to special teams, when it comes to defense. Uh, offensively, we couldn't we couldn't get a first down. You know, third down efficiency is terrible. You know, we uh, defensively, it was more of a bend but don't break. Like I said, they, they had stops. Don't get me wrong. Defense, they did, they did, they did have some stops, but they could have done a lot better than what they did. Uh, but offensively, man, I don't know what to say. Offensively, we got to get something going. Like there, and and then you have you you still have to look at the big picture. Even though there is no more victories, you still missing a ton of guys out there. You're missing your starting quarterback. You're missing your 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 number one receiver in Thomas. You know, missing. you miss your number one running back. Mm-hmm. You know, you're, you're missing key positions. And I understand that, you know, it's going to be tough to get the offenses going. But it's been like this all year. And teams ain't showing you no mercy. Everybody's hurt. Everybody's got mm-hmm. somebody out right now. So the Saints can't stay um, stand there and say, you know, well, we've got a situation that nobody else – is dealing with, I mean, the Cowboys are out there playing with their backup quarterback and winning games. You know, right. the Giants are playing with a, a pretty mediocre offense and they're three and one. So it's, you know, you just look at the, at what the Saints are doing and it's, even if you don't have the greatest personnel, that doesn't excuse, like you said, the mental mistakes. It doesn't excuse the turnovers and the penalties. Yeah, 10 penalties yesterday. And that's only, again, these are the only ones that, that get accepted. You know what right. I mean? So you get 10 for over a hundred something yards. Those are drive extenders. Those are things that in, you know, that put you in bad situations. And to me, again, it's, it's strange that particularly the defense, that was the one thing you said, at least it should be pretty constant 
from mm-hmm. last year. If if not an execution, an attitude. The attitude has not been the same. It has not been that same type of fiery, dynamic, physical, and that's the word we've been using for four weeks now. Mm-hmm. That same kind of physical, you know, defense that we've got, become used to with the Saints, even when they gave up points in years past. You, the other team had to work for it, and there was a feeling like you're gonna take some licks today. I don't know mm-hmm. if anybody's walked off the field defensive, you know, offensively and said, and we, we the Saints put us through the ringer today. We had to earn this. Yeah. I don't know if we know who we are. Definitely offensively, I don't think we know who we are. I think we're still trying to figure it out. Uh, and I think because as a team, we don't know who we are. I think that kind of fades over to the defense side of the ball as well. Um, like I said, the defense gets stops. But once they get in stops, they know, guess what? We better get our water, grab you a sip of, sip of Gatorade, and let's get back ready back on the field because offenses, offensively, they're not moving the ball at all. So, I'm, not, of course, I'm not taking anything off the defense, but when you have an offense that's struggling the way they are and they're keeping you on the field to continue to make these stops, uh, it's taxing on the defense, uh, regardless how good the defense is. Offensively, if you can't play complimentary football, it's going to be tough on your defense. Saints went by running back with committee. Um, it didn't really work yesterday. You, you know, Latavius Murray, Murray had a couple of decent runs. Mark Ingram had a couple of decent runs. But Saints now 0-6 the last six games. They have not had Alvin Kamara on the field. Um, but we still really even haven't haven't seen the Alvin Kamara, whether it's this year or or even at the end of last year. Are you worried about Alvin's durability and just his physical um, state right now? Does he need? I mean, we talked about Jameis and his need to get physically well. Alvin Kamara needs to get well too. Yeah, he definitely does. Uh, and right now, with this rib injury that he's dealing with, uh, that's going to be there for a little while. That's going to be something that he has to get used to playing with pain. And if you're a running back, that's a tough injury to play through pain because you're constantly getting hit every single play, whether you're running the ball, whether you pass blocking. You know, unless you're going out for a route. So you're constantly putting stress on that, on those ribs. Uh, I think him missing these games are good for him personally. They're good for him. Of course, not good for the team because you need him out there. Even if he's just a decoy, just the fact to have him on the field, you know, brings another element to the game. But for him personally, he needs to heal up for the longevity of this team. If they want to have a a good run down the stretch, he has to be healthy. Him and uh, Winston has to be healthy. Did you see anything different in the play calling with Dalton under center compared to having James back there? Did they change um, some concepts in order to get Dalton going a little bit? Uh, seemed like there was a lot of really simple routes early on just to to get some pitch and catch going. Yeah, of course. I mean, but those are things that, that I kind of see with all type of quarterbacks. One thing coaches want to do is get some drive starters. Drive starters are just really just simple routes allowing the quarterback to see the ball get completed or to, to allow the receiver to see the ball get completed to try and get a certain receiver going. Just simple stuff like that does a lot for the psyche when it comes to getting your offense going. Uh, just getting – be called drive starters for a reason, just to kind of get the, get the drive going, uh, see some balls getting caught and getting the offense in, in full in motion. But you don't feel like – I don't feel like there's a quarterback controversy. I don't think Andy Dalton did enough um, – to, to steal Jameis Winston's job if Winston is healthy, if the, if the two are at 100%. Uh, it, it's still, it, you know, Andy Dalton looks like he can manage a game. If you give him enough, he can still manage a game. This is a pro. But the ceiling still, if you give me the best of Jameis versus the best of Dalton right now, I would think that Jameis gives you a better chance to do all the things that you have in your playbook. Oh, yeah. There's definitely not a quarterback controversy right now. Now, if – I wouldn't say it would be one even if this was happening, but if we was winning these games, you know, maybe you start thinking otherwise, but we're still losing, you know? So that shows you, like you said, it's not just Winston. It's not Jameis. It's not just Jameis' fault. The way we're losing is a collective team effort, how we're losing. And like I said, regardless if, if Dalton was in there or Winston was in there, you know, if we continue to have these penalties, continue to turn the ball over, you're still going to lose no matter who your quarterback is because all the things that we're doing are recipes for bad teams. And it doesn't matter who you have on your roster. If you're playing the way we're playing football, 
we're playing bad football. So it don't matter who's on the roster. Uh, if we can't get those things corrected, we're still going to lose. And it's tough. I mean, like, you know, it's every element. Deontay Hardy with the fumble yesterday. And then also Will Lutz misses another field goal. He's four for eight this season. And, I'm, and you know, yeah, you could say it's 61 yards. But he put 60 through on the previous drive. It, it's not an outdoor kick, really. You know, in that in that Minnesota environment, I mean, I know it looks kind of outdoors because all the glass, but you're still kind of inside. The weather is good. He, well, let's thought he made it. You know, he felt like it was a good kick. You, you bounce it off the post twice. I mean, it just it is what it is. But that's four missed field goals this year. That certainly would have changed games. That either would have tied um, games or given the Saints lead at different times. So I mean, you know, like I said, it's a, it's a complete team failure across the board. But even with that, again, I, it's like it's just you keep going back to it. Yeah, you've got five teams in NFL in the NFC right now who are either undefeated with Philly and then the rest three and one. But then you've got this huge jumble of two and two and one and three. The Saints still sitting just one game back in the division officially because Tampa loses again. They're two and two. Atlanta's two and two. Carolina's one and three. So as much as we keep getting frustrated by this team, if reasonably at one and four, if you go eight and five down the stretch, which isn't great, it isn't super, but eight and five puts you at nine and and eight. You're right there. Maybe in this year in an NFC for a wild card spot. Definitely. And I definitely agree with that. I just, I just like we had to get it going. You know, it, it can't continue being into the place where, you know, Everybody else is doing this, so we we still got a shot. That's all fine and dandy when you're looking at the big overall picture of it. But if we continue doing the things that we're doing, we have to fix us. We, we don't want to get to the point to where we're relying on another team to lose out or another team to get beat by this team. Right now, we still got control of our own destiny right now, sort of say. But we got to start winning because if not, that control is about to get – hand it over to other teams, and we just had to wait and see what they do. The O-line seemed to play a little bit better um, Mm -hmm. as far as protection went. Um, Hopefully, you know, if they can keep the same group of guys on the field from week to week again, injuries have been a thing, inconsistency. If they can keep some of these guys on the field, they don't have to be the the Cowboys line from the 90s. But they just right. got to be consistent, and that's been the biggest thing. And and that's the the word for no matter who we're talking about: quarterback, wide receiver, running back, O line, D line, linebackers. Consistency has just been the failure of this team through four games. It, it has, and and even when we talked about the field goal kicker, uh, by him being uh, four for eight this year, I don't even look at the last field goal he made. That was a that that was a long field goal. He almost hit it. I don't even look at that field goal to kind of sum up what's going on. But you look at his average, like I said, four for eight, that just shows you inconsistency throughout the entire year. And it, But it's the entire team. Everybody has just been inconsistent the entire year. Because, I mean, you know, you know, folks will say, well, look, you had the opportunity there to tie. But you're not behind if your defense doesn't give up the 39-yard play, doesn't give up an interference call, doesn't give up these things and allow them to get in the position to kick their field goal. And it's right. weird, too, because Minnesota's kicker comes in. He's been missing stuff. He missed an extra point in the game, but bangs out five field goals. So, I mean, the Saints were fortunate to even be in position because if he makes the extra point, Will Lutz's field goal to tie the game at 25 means nothing because there is no chance to tie it at 25 because the Vikings would have already had an additional extra point on the board. But, I mean, you know, special teams have just impacted everybody. But as we look now going ahead, what do you do coming back? What do you do um, in that locker room, in that coaching uh, office, when guys get back together and try to say, you know, what do we do to turn this around? It's not enough. You know, fans, it's one thing to tell fans, we got to do more. We got to be better. But specifically, when you look at this team, how do you try to get more disciplined and not picking up penalties? How do you get refocused on ball security? Because what we're talking about, Six fumbles lost this season, and they lost five all of last season. So it's just – that's – to me, again, that's that's a mindset thing because guys don't just forget how to carry the ball. They don't – you know, you don't just start letting people punch it out. There's something there that's just not connecting, um, you know, mentally for players right now. 
you know what? I think we have to get back to go back to the drawing board. We have to really write down what we're good at. Write down what we're good at and then write down exactly where we're failing at. And you got to attack both of those areas. Uh, once you find out what you're good at, then, okay, let's build off of that. You know, maybe maybe now we're not just throwing stuff at the wall trying to figure out what what's working for us. Let's go ahead and figure out what's working for us and let's build off of that. And also we need to figure out where we're being hindered at and which penalties, turnovers right now. So we can fix those things, but it has to be done. And we have to be, and have to be paid attention detail to it. Uh, we have to go over ball handling drills, ball security drills before practice, after practice. Uh, we have to really focus on just the discipline part of these things. Two quick things before we close today. Number one, I was surprised that Taysom Hill didn't get more usage at times, as particularly as a runner. You saw him get some good plays um, at certain points in the game. But really, I, I was surprised that he didn't get more than maybe – I thought he would get around 10 touches, and he really didn't. Um, was that a surprise to you? Oh, that was a huge surprise. Huge surprise. Like I said, I'm a big Taysom Hill fan. Uh, and I feel like he is one of the guys that can spark our offense, regardless where you have him at. I mean, if you're going to handle if you're just going to be a, a straight running back with him or if you're going to do play action stuff with him and he may be scrambling out and getting yards. But he is a game changer for us, especially right now when you're needing playmakers. So I would definitely would have thought he would have got the ball more. Um, but again, I mean, we'll see. These are things that has to be correct and have to be addressed. And then lastly, just from – you know, you, you take that trip home. It's a long trip. You know, you've got to get back to the drawing board. And like you said, identify and find those things that to build off of. Because you can't just keep focusing on what you're not doing well. You know what you're not doing well. But if you are looking at the building blocks, give me one thing from each of those units, offensive unit, defensive unit, and the special teams that you think they can build off on, uh, build off of going forward. Offensively, one thing they have to they have to do better to go forward is starting fast. If we can just start fast, uh, that'll change a lot of things for us. Momentum will start changing early in the game. Uh, you just don't know how how important it is to start fast and to finish strong. Uh, special team wise, uh, just back to the details. You know, just when I say back to the detail, I'm talking about the fundamentals. Uh, kicker getting enough elevation on his balls. Uh, returners ball security. Uh, it's simple things like that. Defensively, I think we need to tackle better uh, in the secondary. Uh, we need to communicate better in the secondary because uh, there was a lot of times some guys are just running wide open uh, and and these balls are getting caught. You know, so everybody have their hand in coaching staff. I think they need to be on one accord and, and setting better game plans up or how to get guys, how to get us starting faster. Um, Maybe we switch up how we do practice. Maybe you start running team stuff in practice at the beginning of practice just to start getting the guys as soon as they step on the field, getting their mindset ready of, okay, we starting fast. We're going, we going straight to team right now in practice. We're not doing individual first. We're going straight to team just to kind of get your mindset of starting fast. So we may have to just switch up or tweak up a few things, which I've seen all these things done before as well. Uh, but either way, something has to happen. Is there something, you know, certainly in any job when things aren't going well, it's harder to get your max effort up. You know, it's just, it's a struggle. It's, it's a mental hurdle to get over. When you were in those situations as a player, when things weren't going well, how individually do you find that resolve? And then how collectively do players come together? Do units come together and say, okay, we have to take ownership of this ourselves what are we going to do as a group to get better? How are we going to help? How are we as the linebackers going to help the D-line? How are we as the receivers going to help our quarterback? How do those conversations and just internal um, machinations take place? The first thing they have to do, everybody, I think we hit on it last week, everybody individually has to look at their self individually. Before, forget units, forget receiver unit, running back unit, linebacker, forget the units. Look at yourself individually. Watch the film and see, okay, where can you get better at? Because now once everybody's holding their self accountable and everybody's going to just try to out, try to work their way out of this hole we're in, which that's what you have to do. You have to out, you got to work your way out of a slump. And so paying attention to detail, holding their selves accountable, because once you hold yourself accountable and everybody holding their self accountable, now 
you can hold yourself accountable as a unit, as a receiver group. Well, this, this is what we got to do to get better, to, to take some pressure off our quarterbacks. Same thing with offensive line. This is what we have to do to take pressure off, off our, our quarterbacks so we can run the ball a little bit more. If we get a, a run game, get better. So everybody just has to have, have, have you hold this, hold their self accountable personally. And then you start spreading it out through your, through your position groups. If you had to pick a panic level from one to 10, 10 being the most panicked at this stage of the season, how are you feeling? I'm at a six. It's I'm not, I'm not overly panicked, but I'm not, I'm not even killed right now. <laughs> you know, I'm, I mean, it's serious. Because, yeah. Because, because what we're doing, I mean, it's fixable, but you got to fix it. Let's just, let's just stop the turnovers, which you're not going to stop all of them, but let's cut those turnovers in half, you know, or, or a little bit more in half. Um, and penalties, let's cut those penalties in half or a little bit more in half. So turnovers and penalties, but those are recipes for bad football. Now, if it was if it was because, you know, we didn't have the talent, my panic level would be at probably about an eight. Because we have the talent, we're just not, we're just not, we're not utilizing it. We're not playing well. But you see what it is that where we're messing up at. Penalties, turnovers, and let's start fast. So that's why I'm at a six right now because those things need fixed. I think some fans might be a little higher, but I, I think <laughs> six is is the right where you want to be. Like you said, you keep some perspective. You know what you have. You know this is a talented football team. You know you have mm-hmm. good coaches up and down the staff. You know you right. have mature veterans who have been in these situations before. But at some point, you just got to do it. And they're not doing it right now. And that's where I think that 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 six comes from is like, this is disappointing more than anything else. Mm -hmm. It's surprising. Like, you just don't expect the New Orleans Saints to show you this level of like uh, uh, of inconsistency, of of ineffectiveness, of just sloppiness. It's sloppy football. And, And that is not the bar that has been set for the New Orleans Saints for the past 15 years. And I think that 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 in and of uh, in and of itself. Somebody in that, that room, like you said, individually. And I'm not I'm not trying to get embarrassed on TV on Sundays because somebody's going to call mm. my mama and talk about this. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, we'll see how the Saints will group. We'll see who gets healthy this week. We'll see all those things. And, um, brother, we'll be back later this week to go through it again. Um, tell the folks real quick. I didn't keep up with you before we uh, get on out of here. Man, you can uh, find me on Twitter. Uh, you can find me on Instagram as well, uh, T Copper Ten, uh, but Chance Copper on Instagram, Facebook, any of your social media platforms. And y'all know how to get at me at DM Grub Instagram and Twitter and Hard to Paint. Um, we're online wherever you uh, look to find your podcast as well. Until the next time, he's Terrence Copper. I'm David Grub, and this has been Believe in Saints, brought to you by Bet Online. We'll talk to you soon.